Hello to all of you out there in radio and TV land. Welcome back to This Week in Guns, brought to you by Patriot Patch Company and Primary Arms. This show offers commentary on the latest firearms industry news, information, and buzz. I'm your host, Matthew LaRosier, and I'm joined here once again with my co-host, Sean Heron. Sean, how is it going? It's going well. It's I'm doing well. Um, I haven't really paid attention to the news today, but I see in the show notes that we got some fun yeah. stuff to talk about. But yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I'm I'm doing all right. Yeah, no, nothing to complain about or speak of at all. Uh, certainly nothing we talked about before the show. Oh, but no. anyway, <laughs> um, what I want to talk about is we've gotten more emails from the last episode yeah. than we ever get from, you know, upsetting people when we talk about how horrifying qualified immunity is. Um, and these emails were all about swear words. Ah, I was very shocked, actually. Yes. It was well. I mean, I wasn't shocked, um, but it was just a bunch of you guys were commenting, saying, um, basically, don't censor anymore. Uh, yeah, and it was universally, it was universally anti-censor. Um, so I think I don't know. Um, what's what's your take, Sean? I know there's several reasons that we were doing the bloops, um, but. And I actually, on uh, on my channel, I had one person to tell me he was unsubscribing because bleeps were so offensive to him. Wow. Um, yeah. So what what do you think? Uh, I love cussing. Mm -hmm. And I always have. And in fact, I, my career basically now is cussing. So I, I think it's great. I was actually shocked to get this because historically, and uh, I did get some confirmation uh that you know, some people listen to this show, don't listen to WLS, and it was nice. But unequivocally, every we got tons of feedback, and every bit of feedback was like, "Yeah, we don't, I don't care." Like people cuss. That's all there is to it. It's okay. good. Well, so what do you think? Uh, you know, it is ultimately on on FRN. So. Oh yeah, no, I mean the number one show on FRN is like just a cuss fest. So right. I'm uh, saying, should we go un unbloop? Yeah, I think so. Like we didn't hear one person be like, "No, I'm glad it's bleeped." Yeah. Uh, or, okay. or censored and you know i'm fine with that honestly it, yeah. it, it, it goes all the way back to when jake on the network and 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 hosted the show and you know that's what he wanted that's how he wanted it and yeah. i always just basic i always just kept it kind of how it was because like i i respected the audience that he had built and yeah. but it seems like i don't know uh it seems like people don't really care that much and honestly if you if you do care we would love to hear about it mm -hmm. um i'm not saying that i'm going to drop the f word every 30 seconds but right yeah well, but. yeah so what the people were saying is um and it was if you're having a discussion and you feel so strongly to the point you want to say you know one of the special words then it's better to just say it rather than choke yourself which you know to be honest i noticed both of us doing several times we'd be like yeah and then they we take a step back and then rethink and and say something else and you know what that is kind of like charring it is yeah. kind of like awful um and i've always believed that swear words are just a part of english vernacular that are used in very certain circumstances um and are essential for conveying certain emotions uh and certain reactions and so i've never had a, a problem with them but so yeah so we're not gonna swear on purpose like you guys do on uh we like sh shooting it's not but on purpose that's just how i talk <laughs> <laughs> No, I know. I'm just giving you, just giving you. A... But oh, yeah, there I go. There I go. There I go. Censoring myself. All right. I'll, yeah, I'll have to unlearn that. I'm just giving you crap. Um, but uh, but yeah. So I think uh, thanks for all y'all's feedback. And if you think that's a bad idea, also let us know. We'll tally the votes and we'll do it in the most inefficient way possible, which is simple democracy. Yeah, I think that, <laughs> I think that's a hundred percent it. So, but yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I was I was very surprised, and now I'm excited. And yeah. I that um yeah i i probably will yeah yeah there, there are times when it when it's a good uh exclamation and i'll try to make sure that i only use it in those times yeah no just just speak the way we usually speak i mean aside well no never mind go with what you said i was like mm, <laughs> no no i don't think that's a good idea yeah no if only if only they heard what we say before we go live it's uh yeah. I think even even y'all who were saying no, it's fine. Don't censor yourself. I don't know if you'd like it that much. Um, Definitely not. <laughs> anyway, so yeah. So thanks for all y'all's input. Um, we definitely listen, and 
Um, and it was good to hear all the feedback. I, I just noticed one of those guys who sent us an email about the uh, qualified immunity. It left us a four star review. <laughs> oh boy! Uh, you oh you you like remember his, his um name or whatever? It was no, but it just like it it was the basically the same thing. <laughs> oh, that's okay. It's we can we can disagree. Yeah, no, it's fine. And I mean, hey, it's four stars, right? It's not like yeah. And I rate him four stars as a listener, honestly. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm yeah. Petty. Just, yeah i mean you know i i do want to i do think that it would be a good idea for us one day to just get all those guys together and uh you know have a discussion with them i think it would be really good radio to just be like um you know it'd be like well, okay here's my conception of it tell me why i'm wrong and then yeah. struggle through it uh that would that would be fun and so i don't hate you i do think that you're kind of weak for uh going and like leaving a review like that with the same email <laughs> copy and paste it that's pretty much. <laughs> but that's, yeah, that's I'm, yeah that's pretty weak dude but yeah. i don't have anything against you i me either it's like four star yeah. right like it's not five, yeah. not a five star listener he's just like really a four star it, yeah it's, you know like i five star listeners are people who are either just generally you know good regular listeners or are aggressive human beings a four-star listener is one who regularly listens to the program and is a passive aggressive human being <laughs> you know i would still rate you a five-star lesson uh listener if you just like came out and like questioned the legitimacy of my birth you know rather <laughs> <laughs> Wait, were you born in kenya <laughs> <laughs> oh gosh all right um mm -hmm. oh let's get into the news man yep 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 so you guys know what we're going to talk about you guys have been hearing about it. It's all over the place. HR8, the crate. I'm freaking out right now. Are you panicking? No, because I, oh, have, you... I haven't actually read anything because I've been out of pocket all day. <laughs> right. Um, well, did you pee a little? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Uh, that's good. That's good. We got to make sure you're primed and ready to go. Uh, so let me start out by saying, and this is, you know, kind of my thing. I don't like panic when it's not warranted. This passed in 2019, and it died in the Senate. So it passed the House. Mm -hmm. Okay, it passed the House in 2019 and died in Senate. Died in Senate, and I think, like, before we even talk about the law, that which is stupid and awful, and I think we should be worried about it. We need to put pressure on our senators now to do their job. Um, but as long as we have the filibuster, everything should be fine. Um, uh, that is, unless. There's the one thing, it's this, you know, because you've had 127 and stuff out there that's causing everybody to boil and panic. Mm -hmm. The one piece of worry I have about this is that something that seems so reasonable, like, oh, it's just the background checks. We're just going to make all the guns go to the place and pay the dollars, right? Mm -hmm. That some fence sitters may look at this and go, oh, well, if we give them this, they'll stop pushing for that. Yeah. Right? No, they won't. Yeah, no, they won't. And that's why this needs to be filibustered and not allowed to go forth. But so, so yeah, House House passed it today. Eight Republicans supported it. I saw that. Mm -hmm. uh, rhinos, I, I guess. Uh, I don't well, know. Although, what does Republican mean, right? It, honestly, yeah. I mean, yeah. Politician, Anymore. politician and politician yeah. is corrupt. Yep. Uh, and they hold nothing except my contempt. Um, what is HRA? It's a uh, basically it's a universal background check, right? Is it, there, dude, it closes the gun show loophole. Is there? A, a, I heard. I saw it referred Obvious. as the Charleston loophole today. <laughs> I was like, wow, we're giving them a new yep. name too. Uh, is there anything else in it? Like uh, any other bad stuff? Yes. Um, okay. Well, so there's actually two bills that went forth. So there's. HR8 requires background checks for virtually all firearms transactions. And the other one, I forget the number. It it's like a big number, too. It's not the usual, like, you know, three digits or less. It's a big number. Um watch it'll be like seven and, and everyone's gonna tell me I'm an idiot. Uh but what that does is gives the government more time to sit around twiddling their thumbs when you've bought a gun and they haven't given you a den a procedure deny yet um mm -hmm. previously it was three days yep and we all know in practice that winds up 
you know, they wind up like giving themselves more time than that. But now they want to jack it up to 10. And you know what I think is so interesting from a policy that was put in place back when, like, if you were lucky, your shop had a 28.8K baud modem, <laughs> right? And now we're all like have devices in our pockets that talk to space to send us cat videos and pornography. It now's when they need to take way more time to click on the button, right? Right. That's preposterous. If anything, this should be reducing in time because listen, in reality, this crap's instant. It's only not instant when they're doing nonsense, really. Right. Yeah, when yeah, a hundred percent agree. Um, you know, we have universal background checks in Colorado, and they're really stupid. Uh, like it, it hasn't. I think they've been add-on charges for some stuff, but that's actually a hundred percent it. And uh, no one's actually been prosecuted directly under that. It's it's, mm -hmm. it's kind of like a whole thing, and uh, very useless. Criminals don't actually do any of that. They just they don't they. Criminals don't follow these rules. This doesn't affect anybody. Criminals are not going to a gun store and doing a background check and taking their gun home and, and criming really hard. They're not. <laughs> we know this. Uh, uh, we know this. This doesn't affect anybody except people who already obey the law. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's pretty it's it's quite stupid. And the other thing, and you know, you hear people say it all the time, and it's one of those things that's like a cry wolf thing almost. You hear it say so much that this is going to lead to a registry. I, that one I don't get actually because no, it's not. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it kind of does. Well, they're, they're okay. I guess it, it's do you trust the ATF because they're required to get rid of these records, right? Uh, Only Nicks. So uh, wouldn't this wouldn't this just be? A, but who holds on to the records? The FFL. Who's required by? Yeah. For twenty okay. years. Yep. And then on top of that, you know, all these states that are point of contact jurisdictions. A lot of people think that, oh, well, you know, it's because my state wants to do it themselves and they don't want, you know, they, they don't trust the feds or whatever. Now, most of the states who are a point of contrast jurisdiction do it so they can keep the record. Mm. In Florida, this is something not many people know about this, but I, you know, went and figured this out. The cops can look at a weapon serial number and see if it, you know, was sold through an FFL in the state of Florida and to who it was sold to. Because the state who runs the, you know, background check system here, mm -hmm. keeps all the data. <laughs> they just hold on to it. So now you've got even more stuff going into all those state databases, right? And mine's not the only one. There's tons of them out there. Um, wait, wait, so you guys, so in Florida, it's not just a NICS check. There's a state check as well? St the state is the point of contact for NICS. Okay, so, okay. And in the legislation where that became law, there was no... Um, there was no data hold requirement or anything not like that? Not on the state level. Wow. Interesting. I think they, I mean, like they generally, like it's not publicly available, but and they have it. That's interesting. In Colorado, we have, we have the exact same thing. We're, the state is our point of contact. I submit background checks. I'm an FFL. Mm -hmm. I submit background checks to the Colorado Bureau of Investigation. They run their stuff. They run NICS and then they return a whatever yeah. uh, proceed or deny. Now, Excuse me, but they are required to get rid of that data within 24 hours uh, by statute. Right. And so, th you know, it's funny. I haven't actually looked at the, the Florida stat, like dug to see. Mm -hmm. I, I just know for a fact. Yeah. Because I actually had a, a friendly police officer show me. He was like, oh, this gun? And then he just runs it. <laughs> He was like, oh, yeah, you bought this from here at this day. And I was like, oh, my God, that's disgusting. Don't do that. What, that uh, yeah. That's – isn't that – I'm actually shocked. <laughs> yeah, I, like, well, that so that's why this kind of crap freaks, freaks me out. Because yeah. the only reason that we don't effectively have a registry in my state and in many of those other states where you do have these provisions is because there's this legal presumption, right, that – it's presumed that it could have been lawfully transferred eight or nine times in between, right? Mm -hmm. So you you can't have an effective effective database, right? When the last transaction history is really not helpful, right? Um, yeah. But then if it becomes, if the last transaction isn't in this, wasn't run through our system, it's presumably 
bad. So that means if they catch you with a firearm and they run it and they're like, whoop, doesn't line up, bad news, right? Mm -hmm. Um and there's quite a few states where that would be the case. And then if you're, you know, it's all of a sudden the, oh, I got it through a private sale. I, I suppose you could still say I got it through private sale in 2020. But, um, you know, it's just a, it's just a mess. It's just a total mess. Yeah, that that's no good. But uh, stuff like this just annoys me. Like, really no reason to have this. except, right. and, and then, so yeah, universe background checks. But then they say that... Uh, what is it lengthened to 10 business days from the three because mm -hmm. the Charleston murderer uh, was denied, but then, or was delayed and then right. rushed past three days. So the FFL did exactly what I think they should do. Uh, they, they transferred in the firearm and yeah, in this case it was bad. And in a bunch of other cases, it's just fine. And not, you know, it's infringing upon people's rights by making them wait for God knows how long. Right. And, uh, yeah, you know, sometimes, sometimes bad people do bad things. Like, sorry, mm -hmm. we're never going to legislate that away. All we're going to legislate is all the good people that do good things. We're, we're just going to make their lives even harder. And that, that pisses me off, man. Because, well, guess what people who are like really bad are going to do. They're going to continue to do the same really bad crap. They're, the same thing. They're just going to get the gun from the guy who's not supposed to do it. Yeah. Which they where they get the drugs from. Yeah, that's what they've been doing and yeah. they will continue to do. Yeah. They will never stop because they don't care about the laws. But you know what the, you know what this actually does do? It's like, you know, let's say, you know, um you and I are are in the same state and you know, I'm hanging out at your house and I was like, look at this thing I got, it's cool, huh? And then you were like, Look at this thing I got. And I was like, Hold on, I want that better. And you're like, Oh, I want yours better. And I say, well, I've known you for 10 years and I know that you are, you know, not uh, a, a bad criminal or whatever. And I know you never, you know, have been convicted of anything. So, hey, why don't we just trade? And then you'd, you, you'd be like, you know what you'd say? We Heck can't yeah. because then we'd be felons. Oh, yeah. That, no, that, that is what I would say. Yeah. I would definitely <laughs> so, not be like, yes. <laughs> well, that's, whereas right now you'd be like, yes, <laughs> here, yes. Yeah. Then uh, you know that's that's the practical implication. Or you know when, like I had a, a time recently where I had a friend that was like you know really freaked out. I had legitimate credible threats, and I was like, hey, I'm gonna leave this here. And that was that. It's like you know I know you, I trust you. I'm gonna leave this here. I don't remember the specifics, but basically, um, even letting someone shoot your gun at the range was kind of not allowed in Colorado in 2013. Right after our universal background check was mm -hmm. passed. And then we got an opinion from the attorney general saying, uh, like, no, it's like 24 hours. I don't remember specifically yeah. 24 hours or whatever. So that, that exact thing, like, you know, uh, someone with completely credible threats, they, they're like, Hey man, like this, this, this is happening to me. I'm really scared for my life. Oh no, I'm sorry. I can't, I can't let you borrow yeah. guns. Nope. Unless they're your immediate family member. Uh, cause there's a couple of exemptions in the law, which is just so like ridiculous. Yeah. Like, so what is it about, you know, my brother? What is different about him than my friend that I actually talk to every day? Right. right. Like, my brother would be able to just be like, here, you know, you hold on to this for a day or whatever. But my friend couldn't. It's so, it's just ridiculous. It's, it's stupid. It's it, the law, these proposals are written by people who have never been in those situations. They never had to think along those lines. Right. Mm -hmm. So it's, whereas, you know, I'm sure it's happened to you multiple times. I'm sure there's been multiple times where somebody's come to you and, you know, you trust them and stuff. They're like, look, I don't feel good about this thing that happened, this text I got or whatever. I mean, genuinely no, but like, if that is oh, really? a really plausible thing that could happen to people. It's happened to me like four times. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, honestly, like I, I have personal, I have an FFL, but I also have personal firearms. Right. And uh, yeah, like I, you know what? throw a misdemeanor at me because I let someone who needed it borrow a firearm. Mm -hmm. Like whatever. I'm sorry. I, I don't, I don't give a crap. Um, and, and you know that what's really crazy is I'm like so law abiding. Uh, I've been background checked more than most people mm -hmm. and I'm so law abiding, but what they make me do by adding so much ridiculousness to these things is they, they turn law abiding citizens into criminals. Right. That's that's all this does. Well, that's what happens when you make a new crime. Right, exactly. Yeah. You make new criminals. Everything's a crime now. Yep. 
do you think that, uh, so in 2019, this did pass the house, but apparently Mitch McConnell like wouldn't schedule votes and it, right. it languished in the Senate. Do you think it'll pass this time because they control the Senate? Um, no. Um, I think they'd have to like, they'd have to get rid of the film. Right? Like, unless that every allegedly pro gun Senator was so spineless that they wouldn't, you know, try to, I don't think they'd have the votes to, to, and the filibuster, right? Do you know off the top of your head what the makeup of the Senate um, party-wise is? Uh, there's 100 people in the Senate, two per state. Right. Isn't it? So it's, I think there's, it's basically 50-50 the way it works out because there's a couple independents and there's a couple, you know, right? Um, but it's basically 50-50. And then, of course, you have um, Kamala Harris as the tiebreaker. Gotcha. So let's see, 50 seats held by Republicans, 48 seats held by Democrats, two held by independents who caucus with the Democrats. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's even. Huh. Yeah, that's, uh, it's concerning, man. Um, right. But, but, the, world, but the cloture rule means you need 60 votes. Yeah. Well, the filibuster, right? We did have eight. And what is there, 435 in the, in the house? Yeah. So the house was actually like fairly close for what it is. Um, it was 227 to 203, the votes on HR8. Um, 430? Uh, 435 representatives. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So not all of them vote. It's, it's weird. Uh, but uh, yeah. <clears throat> I don't know. I don't. I don't think they'd have the 60 votes necessarily necessary to exercise, you know, cloture. Um, so I don't see it going through unless they pull some advanced trickery. Yeah. And we, I mean, we do have to worry about, wait, is, is Rubio, is he, yeah, he's a Senator. Yeah. Yeah. And you he's know, he's also very small. Is he, is he a tiny man? Yeah. I, I know he's a tiny man in stature. Yeah, It upsets me. <laughs> That, like, how dare you represent my big state? Ridiculous. Tiny person. Get out. Stand there like <laughs> Napoleon. <laughs> Get out of here. Napoleon was taller than him. Oh, wow. He's that tiny. Napoleon wasn't that short. He was like 5'6". Oh, no. Um, the, the English falsified records because they thought it was funny. Oh, really? Yeah. Wait, so how tall was Napoleon? My whole life is shattered right now. Oh. He's going he's gonna to search for this, but this is a fact that I so, have. Five six like wasn't that short back then, True. but the English kept reporting him as being as like you know four eight or something. Oh, gee. Or, or you know something ridiculous like that. Um, <laughs> but and wait, hold on. So so Napoleon is five six. How tall is? Wait, did I call that? Marco? Yeah, I called that. Yeah, no, you were right. Oh, uh, Marco. So if you adjust for human height inflation. <laughs> Rubio is shorter than Napoleon. Okay, I but see. by but by raw inches, <laughs> yeah, Rubio is three inches tall. <laughs> George Washington was six foot two. Yeah, and he was considered like a beast. Yeah, and he like was a beast, a, a laboring. Oh, see, Pro and now here's the thing that I don't believe about French records: King Louis being six four. I don't know if I believe that. What <laughs> Louis the sixteenth? Weird. Like, yeah, that would be weird. I don't know. Anyway, we're totally off in the weeds. <laughs> Ludwig von Beethoven was only five four. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's, that's, I don't even. know. I just like crapping on Rubio because he's a traitor. Um, he is. He's he's a rhino, and it, it yeah. makes me mad. I ex just I explained why in a previous episode, but yeah, yeah I, I supported him. I thought he was great, and then turns out he's just a Benedict Arnold. Just a typical. Just a you know your classic politics. <laughs> scary. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah no um i don't see it going what do you think i mean i don't want to i don't know i don't feel comfortable prognosticating anymore because everything that i'm like there's no way that'll happen has happened uh yeah. like voting irregularities i was looking at a report yeah. day that was like no they're it, they've tracked it down there's like actual raw data out there that they're presenting um I didn't think that Biden would win. I didn't think that everything that would go on would happen. Like I, I didn't think a lot of things and they all have happened. So while I hope in my heart of hearts 
that this doesn't pass and that we can stop this as well as all the other nonsense coming down the pike. Uh, at this point, it wouldn't surprise me if it did. Okay. Yeah, it would be a bad time. That's it would. Sure. Yeah, it would. Uh, Especially me personally. This would just like screw so much up. And then, you know, I, you know, I'm on an FFL too. I'm a responsible party on an FFL as well. But like, I don't want to be like, oh, hey, let's trade the gun. Okay, we got to go to the shop real quick. Yeah. <laughs> you know who this is a boon to is a boon, not 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 the Linux uh, yeah. operating system, but a boon to is for <laughs> FFLs. Yep. Yeah. They're going to love this. Yeah, they're going to start charging $50, $7,500 to do a person-to-person transfer. Yeah, because they want to punish you. Yes, for not buying it from them. Yes, because because now they have to. Now yeah. you have to go through them. That's your only option, and they will know it, and they will exploit it the same way that cheaper than dirt exploits everybody who shop. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, it's, and like where, what this really hurts is all of the the rural poor out in the middle of the country that have one FFL for you know a hundred miles. Right. And what, what's dirt. that kind of? And let's be honest, if you were him you'd at least think about it, right? Like, the, it's a perverse incentive. Hello, doggo. <laughs> she came to visit. Yeah. She out. says, I hate FUD FFLs. <laughs> yeah, she does. <laughs> but, but yeah, so it's bad news. It Hopefully is. it doesn't go anywhere. We'll see. Yep. Uh, speaking of bad news. Yeah. Okay. So we've been talking about senators. Four of them have been urging President Biden to take executive action on what? ghost guns. Ghost Spooky. guns. That sounds scary. Spooky ghost guns. Oh my goodness. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That was that was amazing first of all. <laughs> um but so yeah these uh the this little uh group of musketeers and Led by New Jersey's Robert Menendez, they wrote to Biden in this, you know, love letter saying, oh, the gun problem, it's so bad while you're waiting for Congress, maybe the blah, 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 blah. Specifically, we request that you immediately direct the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms, and Explosives, ATF. To, it's like as Biden doesn't know what the heck they're talking about. He probably. Uh, <laughs> to regulate these firearms under the Gun Control Act and ensure that they are subject to a background check. Additionally, the ATF should collect data on when ghost guns are used in crimes and publicly release that information. Mm. Now, executive- But they're not ghost guns anymore if you make them not ghost guns. So like, why? <laughs> <laughs> that is true. Uh, of course, Feinstein co, uh, co-authored co this, Blumenthal mm -hmm. from Connecticut and Markey from Mass. Markey. Marky, Bismarcky. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I. So executive action is a suggestion to uh, to like ATF or something, but executive order actually yeah. does hold force of law, correct? Well, y yeah, and so people use the terms interchangeably, and so we're not actually sure what they're asking for. Um, when he's, but when he's telling an executive action can become law if the agency follows through with the wish, mm -hmm. right? So basically what they're asking for him to do is to tell the, tell ATF in DOJ to redraw the definition of frame or receiver to include 80%, you know, um, partially machined ones. Uh, that's what, that's what's being requested here because that's all they know about. Um, of course, this wouldn't cover a large portion of homemade firearms that, that exist out there, but it would cover the ones that they're scared of. Uh, we all know that's what they're thinking about. They're thinking about AR-15, 80%. They're thinking about polymer 80s. That's that's what they want to go after. They want them all to have a serial number. Um, yeah. <sighs> yeah, this is, this is so annoying. Uh, in the article from Bearing Arms, it even says King George didn't try to tell colonists they couldn't make their own firearms. I'm like, that. that's actually very well put. Like, even... The people who have tried to rule over us with an authoritarian hand yeah. have never attacked, like making our own firearms in our garage. They did try to seize our gunpowder, though. Did, <laughs> and that's what started the whole thing. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, he never was, you know. And um, I mean, when you look at um, legal scholars from that era, even the French 
knew that you couldn't regulate that. Like even they were like, no, you can't tell somebody they can't make a weapon to use in defense of themselves. That's ridiculous. Yeah. Like that, that was just like a common thought back then. You just, it was a thing that was beyond the reproach of a legitimate state. Um, if this actually happened, uh, if this, if there was an executive order, the ATF started doing this, um, what legal argument do you think we would have as freedom loving individuals? Um, We'd have to argue that the that the change in definition, because that's what it would certainly come through, is a rede redefinition of frame or receiver, which we already know they're wanting to do. We'd argue that it was argue ar arbitrary and capricious. We'd challenge whatever you know their proposed definition was. Uh, there's multiple ways you could do that. One of the most handy ways would be through the filing of comments that highlight these serious issues. Mm -hmm. um, and then when the agency ultimately fails to address those issues, file, you know, uh, suing. Because it's dangerous for them to do that because of the way that receivers are considered the firearm by the ATF anyway, even though it's mm -hmm. like not actually a thing that should be, right? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the whole framer receiver definition thing yeah. is so funny because when they wrote the regulation, it's very clear what they were thinking of. Revolvers. Uh -huh. Like they flat out just de de described a revolver frame in perfect detail, huh. and that's it. <laughs> that's the only thing that the that the uh, regulatory definition describes, and they've just been like pretending that it covers everything ever since. Because um, you know it it includes uh, you know hammer mechanism, the you know uh, thread to receive the barrel, the breech face. Um, all of this, like in one singular part, yeah. And what has that except revolvers? So weird, man. <laughs> so weird. So, and then that would be like, so maybe if this did go, like that thing could finally be attacked. But then uh, it's not like we're ever going to win that, right? They're just going to change their definition. But it, it, well, it, they'd have to change it, the definition to one that wasn't. And so, I mean, like, I don't want to say it wouldn't be winning because I still believe it's right. Yeah, but in practical effect, uh, you know, I'm sorry to disappoint some of you guys out there. The government likes to break the law. Yeah, and so what they would do is they would do an illegal rulemaking, like they did with bump stocks, and just pretend everything was fine. I am curious now. Biden has said that you know he wants this this kind of thing uh, to happen. I am curious: would he issue an executive order, or is he as toothless as we all think he is? I. I, and don't ask me why. But, you know, everyone's always talking about how, like, they think Kamala is the true danger. And, you know, I think that's true. I think that Biden, you're not going to hear me say much positive stuff about him, all right? Like, for sure. I do think he has some respect for the Constitution. I do think that he, you know, he's, he, he studied the law very closely. He knows how it's supposed to work. And he said on multiple occasions that this is not how you do this. I don't know why he would say that unless it was out of a respect for the, the constitutional structure, not the Constitution, right, because of the whole Second Amendment thing, but at least respect for the structure of our government and the Constitution. I, I think that if Biden has anything to actually say about it as a statesman, he would avoid doing that. That's my own and I know you guys are going to grill me. I'm not saying he doesn't want to do it. I think he wants to sign that bill so bad. You kidding me? Like, I think he wants to sign it so bad. I don't think he wants to do it through um, the administration. Interesting. Uh, lastly, on this one, uh, one last question that I had for you. Uh, it says, additionally, the ATF should collect data on when ghost guns are used in crimes and publicly release that information. Would that not be the FBI's uniform crime report that, that reported something like that? Or would the ATF actually be the one, the reporting body for this? Yeah, that's interesting. Well, I mean, so, and then it would be through DOJ, right? Yeah. Um, so, yeah, it, it is interesting, but I they can write whatever they want, and then it'll get, you know, mishmashed and handed back and forth through the uh, administrative agencies until it finally winds up in a, like, somewhat reasonable place. Yeah, but, and I think that they would, it just shows that they don't really understand the process. It's yeah, just, or it could mean it just mean that they think that this is something ATF should be doing, you know, because uh, they do get to kind of you know the they get to uh, the the legislative le legislative branch gets to um, 
kind of decide what these roles and powers are. True. Um, okay. So, I mean, I don't think it's like, I don't think that's a, a mark of anything. I, I just think um, it's, it's a, it's a thing they're doing now in all of the new gun control proposals is that they're saying that, and the agency tasked with this is also going to tell us about it every year, which makes me think too, because what is their purpose, right? There, there must be some gamesman purpose there. Yeah. And so is it to say, look, see number go down, but what are they going to do when number don't go down? Because it won't. They'll read the data in a way in which it, it it has their their expected outcome. Yeah, they learn. You think they learned that lesson from the assault weapon ban because all of the data <laughs> is so bad for them. True. Uh, that uh, so I don't know. Yeah, maybe they did learn their lesson and now they're gonna fix it, right? But uh, I just think to, to me when I look at that, I'm just thinking you're gonna do assault weapon ban again, and everyone's gonna be like, "Look, it didn't do anything." <laughs> exactly. Yep. Um, did you know that Adidas stands for all day? I, I dream about shooting. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but only com block cartridges. <laughs> right. But so, yeah, let's talk about them. Our friends at uh, Adidas, we got an article up here from mom at arms. Uh, pretty cool. I don't know. Is it a blog? I don't know. Uh, I it's a, it's a website on the internet. Ah, uh, yes. I've yeah. heard of this. Uh, Al Gore invented this. Yeah, he put a, he put some hamsters in the tube, and there it was. Exactly. So, um, so yeah, you guys might remember a while back, Mom at Arms came out with this shirt. It's on screen now, and it's you know it's uh, quite vile, but uh, it it's funny, right? It's the Moms Demand Action logo, and then a bunch of uh, stick figures going at it. Um, so every town went after them, right, to to get their shirt supplier to stop printing these, saying, "No, you're using our logo, no." Uh, well, Bombs Demand did some digging and they just uncovered that a while back, Adidas was opposing their trademark registration for the three horizontal lines. Um, so yeah, the Everytown logo is three horizontal lines interrupted at the left third. Um, I don't know what it's supposed to signify, but it's a, a pretty awful lo logo. And Adidas is, you know, as trademarked the three horizontal white lines uh, we all you know relate it to slavs and in, in track suits etc yeah. <laughs> oh, it's he's pulling it up it's yeah pretty... now I'm like wait is that what it is like well, no, so they have that but they also have registered the three lines interesting yeah. just three lines in general mm -hmm. huh three horizontal lines and so the fact like every town was registering this for multiple purposes including making merchandise shirts and clothing and so you see that on the left yeah that's a registered okay uh, registered trademark interesting but the interrupt that okay so if every town was able to register without any fuss the interrupted three lines that would that would mean bad things for like the tracksuit market if you're adidas right yeah so i just think this is really interesting um uh, they did eventually come to an agreement. Uh, Jesus and Everytown worked behind the scenes, and uh, they were allowed to move forth. But uh, but yeah, see here, right, right here, Adidas opposes Everytown logo trademark application. Uh, yeah, pretty, <laughs> pretty crazy. This article is a little bit confusing because it's got this mom's demand action. Yeah, but with a bunch of like stick figures having sex. Mm -hmm. So. Well, so that's them showing like what they did and that yeah. every town crapped on them for. Which is um, hilarious, actually. Yeah, no, it, it's pretty good. And then at the bottom, you see the every town logo right next to the Adidas, um, you know, registered trademark. Yeah. And it's Very interesting. So the real trolley move would be for every town to release tracksuits that have the interrupted three lines. <laughs> yeah. I want Adidas to win, but that's only because I hate every town with a. Yeah. Fight. Well, and, and like, I mean, I don't really care about intellectual property as a general concept, but I just think this is funny that um, every town was getting all angry at mom at arms for doing a funny joke shirt. Right. right? And then, uh, yeah, you reap what you sow. You want to play the IP game and someone's going to play it against you. But yeah, like I said, this isn't ongoing. Uh, they they came to an agreement with Adidas, but mom at arms just uh, uncovered all this information and I was thoroughly entertained by it. And I thought you guys might be too. It is, uh, it is entertaining. Go, go check out the article. There's all kinds of back and forth and it's pretty funny. And some good memes too. Definitely. <laughs>
All right. So now we've got a bunch of state law developments for you guys. I just figured we'd cover them kind of rapid fire. Um, we got like three or four different things to talk about. First up, Kansas HB 2058. Uh, it passed the House in the state. It would recognize all out-of-state carry permits and allow individuals aged 18 to 20 to apply for a Kans uh, Kansas concealed carry permit. Hmm. So that's pretty cool, right? Yeah, I I think that's great. It, it, it's like pro it's uh pro freedom, and I'm I almost shocked to see it. But I mean, Kansas is generally uh, pro freedom, right? Uh, ish. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, like, well, there is no true Scotsman, right? So I'll I'll never say pro uh, freedom, but it, it's in the right direction. Fair. You know I mean, uh, well, I mean the the pro freedom bill would be it is illegal to ask somebody carrying a gun whether they have a license. Yeah, you know that would be the pro freedom bill. <laughs> Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. But this uh, is good. This is good. It's a step in the right direction. Step in the right direction is a step in the right direction. As so a, It passed the house. Where does it go now? Senate. And then. And then to the governor's desk. Very nice. Uh, has the governor indicated whether he would sign it or not? I don't see that in here. I, ex you know, I don't, I'm going to be real with you, man. And I'm not ashamed to say this. I don't know anything about Kansas politics. Uh, you know, Kansas, I think is like uh, that way. <laughs> And that's about what I know. <laughs> yeah. I, I, but, um, I know that Kansas lies between you and I. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just saying this seems like a, a good step. Feel good for you guys in Kansas. Tell your, you know, legislators to, to do this one. Tell them to, to do the good law and stop the bad one. Exactly. You know, I'm in favor of all good laws and I'm against all the bad ones. So, yeah. <laughs> Same. So, South Dakota, next up, we got two vaguely pro-gun bills headed for the governor's desk now. So, we've passed the House and Senate in the state. Uh, so, we've got South Dakota Senate Bill 100, which is a nice number for those of us, you know, with various disorders who look at those types of things. It provides civil protection to gun businesses and prevents the government from regulating arms during declared states of emergency which we, a lot of us learned those lessons, you know, during the yeah. beginning of the pandemic is that local governments were like, Hey, we have emergency powers. Let's right. play with it. <laughs> yeah. <exactly. laughs> uh, and then also SB 111, another wonderfully named bill, which reduces the cost for certain concealed carry permits. Um, they're both headed to the desk of governor, Christy Noem, uh, who was recently in the news for making uh, various uh, bad statements about trans people. So that's, you know, maybe she's not super pro li civil liberties, but she seems pretty pro uh, gun. Although, yeah, like she was very against like uh, lockdowns and things like that. Um, seems to be pretty pro freedom, but that, that's disappointing that she's, I, I didn't see what she was. She um, banned, uh, you know, it's the sports thing, and and I I don't want to talk about gender on here, but I just like, eh, whatever. Uh, it, I know it was all over the news. Uh, Christy Noem uh, banned um, anyone who wasn't a biologically born female from participating in women's sports or something. Like that. You know, I I'll be honest. I support that. Um, I I am not anti-trans by any means, but I support that. I don't support any laws. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm just like, I sit there and I'm like, okay, that's why I don't watch sports. <laughs> just let them do whatever. Let everyone do whatever. I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> that's but, fair. Yeah. That's, that's everyone adopt my politics, which is the politics of why, <laughs> if somebody can't give you a one sentence reason why you need to do something that's very compelling, just absolutely. don't do it. Absolutely. <laughs> um, but yeah, so then Colorado, maybe you should tell us about this one. Dude, okay. I thought <laughs> in the notes before the show, I, I've been like super freaking busy lately, but I did not even know about this until my name's Sean. I don't care about gun rights. Right. <laughs> I was, at, I kind of am embarrassed that I, that I didn't know much about it. I've, I've I read about it a little bit before the show, but it is, it doesn't surprise me. Colorado kind of sucks now. It used to be great. Now it sucks. Uh, yeah. I don't know what happened. Like I am no longer the state where guns were made in Boulder. No, no. Yep. 
I am a hundred percent for legalization of weed, but I think it's actually been devastating to Colorado um, because it, I think that a lot of people uh, came to Colorado that are politically different from what Colorado is known for. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they came here because of legalized marijuana, which again, I'm a hundred percent for like, I think you should be able to get it at seven 11. Um, but those people brought their politics along with it, just like they're doing in Texas, just like they're doing in a lot of different States. And, uh, we've ended up with really ridiculous gun laws because of that. Yeah. So like, I wish we could legalize weed, but keep the people who want legalized <laughs> weed out of Colorado. <laughs> <laughs> I, I wish that people had some ideological consistency. Mm-hmm. Like they could think about, hey, I uh, came here to escape a prohibition that threatens me with violent enforcement and locking in a cage. Yeah. Let me. Oh, what are you selling? <laughs> right. Prohibition that threatens violent enforcement and locking people in cage? Neat. <laughs> yes. All right. But, so- yeah, it's HB 1106. Okay. Yeah. Just past the the. Colorado House, 40 to 25, so Ugh. not very close. No. And it's headed to the state Senate. And, you know, you guys have seen these a million times before. They sometimes call them Ethan Law. They, they call them this. They call them that. But they're safe storage laws where, basically, if you have a family, uh, you are not allowed to have a, any equipment necessary to protect them. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, I, I do want to read this. I, I'm very against like reading stuff verbatim, but I think it's important. This says the bill requires that firearms be responsibly and securely stored when they are not in use to prevent access by unsupervised juveniles and other unauthorized users. The bill creates the offense of unlawful storage of a firearm if a person, oh, cool, a new violation. If a person stores a firearm in a manner that a person knows or should know that a juvenile can gain access to the firearm without the permission of the juvenile's parent or guardian or a resident of the premises is, is ineligible to possess a firearm under state or federal law. It's a class two misdemeanor and it requires licensed gun dealer to provide each firearm at the time of firearm sale, transfer a locking device capable of securing the firearm. So is that different from the federal law that requires a gun lock with every handgun or every right? Firearm? Yeah. Most of these safe storage things, um, they require that the, the firearm act- itself be like, you know, locked away. Yeah. We require it. Like I have to give people a gun lock. Yeah. And yeah, no, that's a, every, you know, it's the same Chinese lock that comes in. Yeah, you know, it, virtually every gun you ever get. Yeah, and no one ever wants them. Um, yep. and I'm like, sorry, I, I'm required to do it, and I've got literally a bin full of them. Right. Um. So yeah, more state laws just that 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 are added on to something that's already required federally, which doesn't make it right. Sense. Well, so that I guess what they're so I, I guess they're saying that that little Chinese lock would. Um, they're either saying the like the little Chinese lock is like is safe storage. Which then they're, I guess what they're saying is, well, since they had to give it to you, which they already had to give it to you, but anyway, um, then you don't have an excuse for not having your weapon locked up, right? Uh, And it says the juvenile can gain access to the firearm without the permission of a juvenile's parent or guardian. Like, can, like, able, ability, like, what if your kid's like a master lock picker? Yeah. (laughs) I don't understand. Like, is permission is a what different. if the kid just has constant permission yeah or what if, <laughs> what if i just told them no don't touch that yeah you know like at a, this is a, another poorly written i swear to god colorado has the most poorly written laws ever it's, it's the whole reason that the attorney general had to literally uh put out a thing saying no someone can shoot your gun at the range yeah the, the, the law in 2013 was written so poorly that it was they un- were all blasted when they were <laughs> right <laughs> Oh, dude, check it out. I banned the gun. <laughs> uh, actually, that says Jim. G-Y-M. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Jim gets loaded into it. <laughs> oh, that's terrible. Into a black van. The anti-Jim law. <laughs> but, yeah. All right. Last up, we got some some good. This was on Loose Rounds, and this was making the rounds. Uh, Sean, you got to pull this up. This is a... This is a this is a plate carrier that everybody should want. Oh dang! I I just heard banjos in my head. <laughs> <laughs> that belt buckle. Because what if there's a hoot nanny at the hoedown? Right. <laughs> okay. The, it, for the people who are listening, it is a denim attack yeah. denim plate carrier. Uh, the front mag pouches appear to be made of pockets on jeans. Uh, the so back pockets, yeah, jean back yeah. pockets. Yeah, the back pocket holds two AR mags and then looks like just little pouches hold uh, pistol mags on the front. The best part is the fringe on across the back. Of yeah. the plate carrier. 
It's got the classic inverted chevron fringe yes. that you've seen at your local um, line dancing bar a hundred times over. And this guy who's wearing it, you know what my favorite part about it? The horn. That's in like 1895 Nagant revolver. Oh, geez. That's I guess he just like, he didn't have a six gun. So he, <laughs> he's like, I need to put a revolver on my belt. So he put his seven oh, gun on his head there. Look at that. Yeah. Amazing. Good I'm pretty you. sure that's an 1895. It's it, it could be that or like one of the nine other guns that, you know, were all copied from the same Belgian design. But uh, this comes to us from uh, Loose Rounds. And this is amazing. I actually did see that someone is releasing leather covered plates and the leather is supposed to serve as an anti spall. Is this more steel? Yeah, it's a steel plate oh, and it's covered yeah. in leather for anti spall. And I was like, oh, okay. Well, you know what? I've seen the videos where they test those. And, you know, they put the balloons all around and everything. Yeah, I've seen them and too. it's like, okay. I still don't want it. Yeah, I don't either. Uh, <laughs> I just don't want steel. I'm sorry. Yeah. Ceramic. I've got a set of steel armor that's, you know, I've got my set, which is ceramics, Hesco's. And then I've got a set where if, you know, I ever needed to put one on a buddy. But that's steel. Yeah. It's kind of like, sorry, dude. I have a set of steel. I've got a set of ceramics uh, for Angel, and then I I wear the uh, Safe Life Defense uh, level four plates and level three A plus soft. Mm, okay, which I love. Why do you need that? I'm a larper. Why do you, why, why do you need that, huh? I'm a larper. Are you going to have somebody mow you down or something? Just leave me alone. I like sailing <laughs> alone, and I like to larp. That's all. I, that's all I know. Sailing alone. Oh, Sailor, yeah. Sailor Moon. <laughs> oh, Sailor Moon. <laughs> I'm a LARPer. I, you know, I, I go to the park and I throw little bags at my friends and I scream lightning bolt. That's what I, <laughs> it, it's no different. I just yeah. do it with machine guns and body armor. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. 